Concerned with the problems faced by rural communities, the Australian Schools Commission initiated an innovatory scheme called the Country Education Project. There are many problems within the rural environments, such as limited specialist resources, isolation between schools, regional centres and capital cities, isolation within rural communities, small size of schools and the rural economy. The challenge is to tackle these problems and produce the means to confront the future in a mood of openness and participation, creating a real chance to at least see the situation clearly. The King and Ovens Valley form one regional zone. Geographically, there are two adjacent river flat valleys in the northeast of Victoria, populated by many small towns and farms. These communities are separated by rugged country, rivers and vast distances. The King Valley is the smaller and more sparsely populated, with its communities spread throughout the tiny, pocketed valley. The valleys consist of cattle, dairy, hops and tobacco farmers. Tobacco is the major industry, an industry that has relied heavily for the last 40 years on the labour of Italian migrants and recently on Yugoslav and Spanish workers. The largest town is Myrtleford, which is also the centre of the tobacco industry. The King and Ovens Valley region today is a diverse, multicultural and multi-ethnic society. Many changes are rapidly occurring within this community. The degree and depth of these changes and the long-term effects are only now being recognised. The Country Education Project is designed to assist country people in implementing their own educational programs based on what they feel is needed to make life better. The focus has been to identify local skills, competences, abilities and resources within the communities so that these can be built upon and shared in a cooperative spirit between all schools and community groups with the decision-making process at the local community level. I was thinking back to the basic philosophy of the CEP scheme which in very simple words is cooperation, sharing and competence. There are three very basic points but um, especially cooperation. Everybody tries to help each other with things. Uh, sometimes in the dressmaking class I get very busy with another person and I look around and I see one of the other ladies showing somebody else some simple little thing that she's learned and I find it really great. Um, sharing, uh, everybody I find is very unselfish and very willing to share of their time, their talents, um, their equipment. Their, I, I've never heard ladies not sharing in any way. It's really beautiful. Um, very unselfish atmosphere, uh, very happy atmosphere it makes for working in a class and competence. Um, I'm sure these ladies participating in the different classes have no idea of the competence that, and the talents they have within themselves and uh, I think one of the main things of running the courses are to see these talents coming forward from each person. I'm new to the community and um, when one is new to a country community it, it is difficult sometimes to um, get to know people in the community and CEP has definitely allowed me the opportunity to meet people straight off where maybe it might have taken me a lot longer. As far as the class that I attend which is sewing, it's helped me a great deal because I'm one of these horrid people that have always bought things off racks and now coming to live in the country I find that I do have to make my own clothes and just for the economical fact that clothes these days are expensive so I have wanted to learn to sew and the CEP here in this community has offered me the chance to be able to do that and at the same time twofold allowed me to meet some of the members of the community. Oh, the appeal of the class to me is the great company. We have really fun nights and um, we um, talk about all manner of things as well as sewing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's really a, a night to look forward to each week. It's the first time ever 
that anybody's ever said to the country people, solve your own problems, come up with your own solutions. Usually we're, we're the recipients of programs imposed upon us by metropolitan bureaucrats, you know, uh, by, by government departments. They say, uh, here's what you're going to get and whether it meets our needs is another thing. This time they've said to us, you've got the money, you tell us what you want and then make your programs work yourselves. Use your own competences, your own, your own expertise, uh, share amongst the communities in, in the region, cooperate amongst yourselves and if you've got a good idea, uh, come to the CEP and we might be able to work out a program that will be a really meaningful sort of solution to the problem that's there in the valley. The newspaper developed mainly through a local newsletter that we had going in our own community here and uh, perhaps from the ethnics project officer with the CEP travelling around the district and uh, finding a need for a similar type thing in other areas and uh, we also felt it would be a good idea to have the one newsletter for the whole area and provide a forum for the whole district. I think the needs that the uh, newsletter caters for in the community are basically uh, gathering the community together as a whole instead of separate little communities not knowing what each other are doing and providing a forum for news to be spread all over the whole district and also to provide a means of uh, disseminating our news in Italian for the Italian community and also a forum for agricultural news and that type of thing. The response to the newsletter so far has been fantastic. Uh, we've already put the first edition out and at the moment we're gathering the news for the second edition and uh, the first edition the amount of news we got was too much for what we could fit into the sheets of paper and so it was a case of pruning it down uh, and it also looks as if uh, this is going to be the case for the second edition and uh, there are some ideas we haven't even explored yet for news. Right back at the beginning when the Country Education Project first began in the valleys uh, one of the main things that was brought out at the sub-area meetings was the fact that there were problems in the ethnic community. There were, there were no resources for the ethnic community and the, there was a visible division in the valley between the ethnic communities and the Australian communities. Um, even within the uh, ethnic communities themselves, you have the very small groups of people who have no services, the, the Yugoslav section, the Greeks and the, uh, the Spanish-speaking minorities and there's no translation service, interpreter services or anything like that for these people. The Italian community itself, which is very much larger and much more visible, is, uh, has, has different sorts of problems and uh, we, had to, we didn't want to impose any programs so we decided to have a survey done to see what the ethnic communities themselves thought they needed and how, how their needs could best be met. The people of the valley, they don't have different need because of the nationality. They might have a different need for the circumstance they find themselves in, but not because of the Italian or Australian. I think they are uh, both uh, groups, they face in the same problem, economically, uh, for uh, education for the children, uh, and uh, so that doesn't really uh, make any difference between them. I don't think we do have an ethnic problem so much as we have a community problem, um, mostly in the sense that we lack so many facilities for the general use of the community in this area. Uh, we've had some examples recently, for example we had the Italian uh, speaking theatre up from Melbourne, but we've had no English speaking theatre. And I feel that this is one area where we've got to be extremely careful that we don't create an ethnic problem in the sense we are providing facilities for the ethnic community and not for the English-speaking community. I also feel that we've got to look at what does the community as a whole need, and I think this did come out in the Cura report, that people were looking for other resources in the valley which we do not currently have for both ethnic and English-speaking peoples. The ethnic people of the valley, I don't think they have any specific problems, but uh, most of them don't want to get involved because they're used to having everything done by their own gov uh, governments in their own countries and when they come here they don't expect to get involved in things here either. But I don't think it's a ethnic problem, I think it's, a, it's also a local problem because the local people don't get involved either and I think it's apathy on everybody's part. The ethnic people are in a tobacco 
intensive tobacco industry which uh, has them working 14 months in a 12 month job and most of them don't have time to get involved in outside activities. Uh, we have a lot of children in the area and there doesn't seem to be much for them to do and uh, we need something to get them involved in to keep them occupied. The first thing we did after the report was prepared was to appoint an Ethnic Projects Development Officer. Uh, that's Marilyn Warner, who's now working with the Country Education Project. Um, her job is to find ways and means of putting the recommendations into practice. Already she's done a number of very worthwhile things. We've got a community newsletter now which enables us to get uh, information out around the valley. Large sections of it are translated into Italian and we're presently looking at, the, at ways and means of translating into Spanish and, uh, Spanish and Yugoslav languages and Greek. Uh, this means that we can let people know what's happening in their community, provide them with some local news for the first time. They've never been able to read in their own languages the, the things that are available. We funded Sister Angela in Myrtleford for a, uh, uh, an, Ita an English language class uh, for migrant women. The isolation of the, of the migrant woman on the farm has been one of the major findings of the survey. They can't, uh, many of them can't drive, which means they can't come in on, under their own steam. They've got to wait until their husbands are free from, from their work to come into town. Or to, and often they have no contact with the Australian community because the people on that farm will speak the, the native language, the ethnic language, which means that some of them have been here 20 years without learning more than a couple of words of English. And they have, you know, they have very special needs, the women. I have English classes because the ladies uh, want to learn English because they feel that uh, they need to know English to be able to live in Australia. Also, the children who start school um, want to relate their experiences at home but they can't in Italian anymore and therefore they want to keep the communication with their children. Um, they also feel that, uh, or mo they feel that as if they would be deaf and dumb if they were in Australia and they wouldn't understand what's happening. Children face difficulties because of differences in their school life and their home life because they're involved in two um, cultures and two languages. Uh, this is, can be a difficulty, especially uh, if they feel that uh, one culture is more acceptable to their peer groups. Um, also some of them are born in Australia and f feel that like to be Australians whereas they're called um, migrant children or Italian children. It is important for me to learn English pretty good. For one day my sons, I had two sons and a, and a daughter, one day they will get married. I, I think very soon and I want to be able to communicate with you know my daughters in law or my son in law especially when I see the little children I want to teach them my Italian and my English too you know what I mean I want to be able to communicate and to teach what I now experience you know all my life time experience of my children younger times thing like that enrich the you know the word the, the words and the family life by knowing and by expressing what we what we feel and what we know it's very important to me learn english because i want to communicate with the other people neighbors friends because it's sometimes i feel boring home and not have anybody to talk because I'm Hispanic, you know, my language is... And I think this is very important to learn English, to have friends and communication with other people. When the Country Education Project first moved into the Ovens and King Valley, it became increasingly evident that there are many resources and facilities available to the people in the valley who the people were not themselves familiar with. To use these resources and facilities, it was decided that it would be a very good idea if they were all put together in one resource book, which would be available to all members of the community as a whole.
In the book we have listed the, all the cultural and recreational needs of the community. We've included halls and the recreation grounds, the environmental swimming pools as well as the public swimming pools. All the groups, the tobacco associations, the craft groups, the youth groups, and the religious groups. In fact, we have over 80 different groups and associations listed. We've also got all the arts, or as many as we could find, of all the arts and craft people who are prepared to share their skills with the rest of the community. Amongst these we've got bush, bush walkers and bird watchers, as well as people with sporting skills who are prepared to teach people swimming and uh, coach uh, young people in whatever sport they are interested in. The need for the swimming pools, as assessed by the Needs Survey, was that we found that 85% of the children and a large percentage of the adults in the Ovens and King region were non-swimmers. To obtain swimming instruction, primary children had to travel long distances to the major centres of Wangaratta and Myrtleford. This was very time consuming. For example, the children from Chess Hunt and Chess Hunt South primary schools in the King Valley region had to spend up to half, an hour, half a day travelling to obtain a half hour swimming instruction at the Wangaratta pool. There were no, no local aerials suited to swimming. The King River, um, which is the only available place to swim, is dangerous and snake infested. Our school council is made up of ten members. Um, they are graziers, dairy farmers, bus drivers and two housewives and they've got no and they had no specialised skills in handling a contract worth twenty four thousand dollars. Thus we found it necessary to co opt the powers of the public works department and they have helped in the supervision and the building of the pool. Many problems arose in the building of the pool. For example, the poor workmanship of the contractor resulted in a large area of concrete in front of our pool having to be replaced because of the contractor's failure to put in the expansion joints. Another, another factor that was a good learning process was the fact that the school council of 10 was too large to handle, it, handle the contract as a body, the day-to-day -day supervision of the pool and therefore they formed a subcommittee and these three individual members of the subcommittee have gained valuable experience. Kiviak or the King Valley Educational Advancement Committee is not a school as such, although it's, it has two teachers employed by the Education Department of Victoria. There are six schools involved in the organisation and they are Whitfield, which is the base school, and Myrie, Eli Upper, Chessunt, Chessunt South and King Valley. Our main attributes are a bus and a resource centre here at Whitfield and today's group day involves using the bus to bring children to the centre. The need for the program uh, evolved in 1973 from a group of parents and teachers who worried about the low oracy and literacy rates in the area so um, they got together and received some funding to start Kiviak going. As well as those problems there is a problem of isolation and one of shifting population and also uh, the migrant problem and one of, an example of this is the fact that many families at home don't speak English. There will be two main educational benefits of the program to the children. The first is the additional two staff uh, spread throughout the area. The head teachers can use these staff for whatever purposes they like. They can use them for subject teaching, for example, language, phys ed, science, social studies. And the second advantage would be the socialization aspect of the group days, where children are brought from the isolated rural schools together and they have a program running here at Whitfield where they communicate with each other and, and overcome such things as shyness. There is a, uh, another indirect benefit of the program and that is concerning the teachers. 
the professional development of the teachers has improved greatly uh, with our regular welfare group meetings and the fact that we have group days here and we communicate more often with each other. Our program would not have been able to run to the extent it is, it is this year without CEP funding of about $5,000. They've provided money for transporting on excursions and group days. The program's operating in two valleys, um, the King Valley and the Ovens Valley, and I'm working in the Ovens Valley. And I drive the van, which carries equipment for the schools and for the art lessons, um, round to different schools, the rural schools. I take five one-teacher schools, three two-teacher, one three-teacher and one twelve-teacher school. The twelve-teacher school is a large consolidated school in, in Myrtleford, which is a, a different job altogether, more advising than, than teaching. And I visit the schools once in three weeks for half a day per teacher. The need came initially from the teachers um, who felt they didn't have the expertise to give the kids a, a decent art program. Um, they felt that the, the um, larger schools who had art teachers were getting something that their kids weren't. Um, and so the rural school kids were at a disadvantage when they reached high school. The educational value of the program as I see it is, is a sense of achievement. Um, too often we're looking for the right answer and, and art caters for the opposite. Um, it also gives the kids a chance to express themselves in a non-verbal way. Everything seems to be geared towards the verbal, the written and the oral. Um, I would say though that kids can't express themselves until they know the limits of the materials they're working with and that's what a lot of my work's been involved in up till now. The gym program involves six schools and they share a beam balance, a vaulting horse, a beat board and eight gym mats. And the, the equipment's housed at the Markwood Hall but it's picked up from there. And then each school stores the equipment in a hall if they've got one. We're lucky we've got a hall within walking distance but some of them haven't got a hall within walking distance and they have to store it at the school. Um, and you ha we have parents at each gym session and we have three at each gym session, otherwise you, I, you couldn't run the program without parents. The need for the gym program is there's no gym equipment in our school and very little in any of the other schools, so without CEP's assistance we wouldn't be able to run a gym program, otherwise we'd have to go into the, into the city where the city kids have uh, access to community gyms, whereas we don't, if we went in we would um, take a whole afternoon out, whereas the way we're doing it at the moment, we only have an hour out. And the children in the city have, develop, have already developed their skills, these skills when they go on to high school, whereas these kids would be disadvantaged because they wouldn't have been able to develop these skills. And the educational value of the program, it develops basic overall confidence and it improves their coordination and basic skills in balance. Before coming to Myrtleford, I had this funny idea that everybody up here would be a skier. The snow is so close to all the towns here in the valley, and it seemed to me that kids would travel up and down just as people in Melbourne would go to the beach or go to the national parks. And I was very disappointed when I got here to find that that wasn't the case, that most of the kids, through lack of opportunity and lack of finance, had not experienced skiing. Some of them who've lived here 15, 16 years and never been to the snow. and so. The Nordic skiing program was designed with the idea in mind of providing cheap skiing and regular skiing to school children and community groups within the Ovens and King Valleys. It's available to primary and secondary schools and it's available to community groups. The Nordic skiing program fits into several areas of the school program. Naturally it fits into school sport. It's a great exercise activity and it develops coordination in students as well. But because it provides a means of access to an alpine environment, it has applications in subject-based areas as well. It can be used in secondary schools for excursions onto the snow in geography, biology, science 
and in primary level in geography and nature studies as well. And it's also an excellent group activity, uh, brings groups of students closer together and teachers closer to students and even teachers closer to teachers. And as such it has excellent social footings as well and I think it's a, a great group activity to do. Now the computer program works in this school by giving priority firstly to the three years of schools, Myrtleford High School, Wright Higher Elementary School and Marion College, also in Myrtleford. If it's not required for use by the three schools, it's available for community users. The community users may use the system either here at Myrtleford High School or at a place of their choice. The only restriction on them is that they be competent in their use and also that they sign a release form guaranteeing they'll return the machine in good order and condition at the end of the use. I see the main value of the computer in terms of education, in getting people used to using computers. Um, computers are going to become even more important in society as time goes on, um, unless we have a World War III, of course, in which case um, people are really going to have to get to know them. Uh, they're going to have to be literate in computers, just as at the moment they're required to be literate with pens and paper. And so we're aiming to teach people to understand what computers do. Now, we're doing that by getting children to learn how to program and also operating the computer uh, using programs that have already been written. An example of this is the um, word processor program that Peter and I wrote, uh, which is used by the students in typing classes. A word processor turns the computer into a sort of mini intelligent electric typewriter. So that's the main use I see. Without the Country Education Project's contribution, uh, there would have been no computers here at all. Uh, there was just no way that we could uh, meet the funding for even one computer here. And as, uh, as it is, we've been provided with three. And uh, without the CEP, there would have been no computer project at all. And the kids in this area would have been really behind the, uh, the barrier as far as the job opportunities in that area goes. <laughs> The music program was started after there was a survey of the area which brought about the appearance of a lacking of music education in the schools. The parents and the teachers all felt that this was something that needed to be solved. They felt that the best solution to the problem, because so many of the teachers felt they were lacking in self-confidence, ability or knowledge, was to bring in a program put it into the schools as an ongoing in service for the teachers so that they could eventually take it over and have the program in the schools for themselves. There are five specialist music aides employed all travelling to their allotted schools on a weekly basis. I travel to seven schools three days a week. I work on two days I go to two schools, one day I go to three schools. Each of the schools has been provided with a box of instruments, all non-tuned percussion instruments. They've also been provided with chime bars. And all the children have been given the opportunity to learn recorder and if they wish to, they're provided with a recorder until they leave the school. Then the recorder becomes the property of the school. And with the recorder lessons, they're um, either given by the special music aid or by the classroom teacher, depending on the arrangement that's been made in that school. The music program is filling a gap in education 
in the primary level by instilling a bit more self-confidence into the children, making them able to stand up in their peer group and do things without feeling embarrassed. It's also teaching them to work with a group, listening to each other, working together and coordinating as a group. It's also doing a lot for their own coordination, physical coordination in such things as the dance class, teaching them folk dancing uh, and things like that. And I think perhaps the most important thing is it's teaching them to listen, not just to hear, so that they can pick out the different sounds and the different innuendos in voice and in sounds around them. It's, this is something that they'll use later on all the time, whatever they're doing, if you can listen properly, whether it be in conversation, whether it be in other languages or listening to music. Once you've trained your ear to listen rather than just to hear, then you're gaining a lot more out of being alive. In searching for new ways of bringing educational experience to the rural communities, the project has viewed education in its broadest sense. Seeing the community at large as the educational agency, allowing people the opportunity to share their skills and ideas, and for others to benefit from these resources in an atmosphere of meaningful cooperation. The aim is towards advantages rather than disadvantages. The people that are involved in the theatre company are a cross-section of the whole community. There's uh, farmers, housewives, whole families, you know, right from the kids, mother and father, the works are involved in it. Uh, myself, I'm a truck driver and I, I'm in it. Uh, and, you know, all these sort of people make up the complete list, really. The company fills a, a great need in this community. It's being so sparsely populated, I suppose. Uh, it's never had live theatre before. The closest live theatre is Wangaratta, and they hold two or three productions a year. And uh, to have something else like this live theatre in the valleys, like it, it, it involves both sides of the valleys, people from all over. It's hard for me to judge the response to the theatre company in, in some ways because I am an outsider and I've only just joined this year and it's been going for two years. But you see, the, most of the people in the theatre company come from the valleys, so I can only say then that their response is terrific. They, they come along and they join in, and we get audiences who clap at the end of the show. The community, I think, can relate much better to the theatre in that they see people they know, and people that they know are country people doing things. Um, it's very hard to find plays and, and pieces which are immediately about country people or, or are written by country people, but um, I, I think they, they get a... they can learn something much more immediate to themselves than, you know, TV, which is very city based um, and it's all about city things and you know, I mean you know take your American <laughs> uh, you know cops and robbers or something you know I mean what, what, what's what's that to do with here <laughs> the last full full length play we did we had just on a hundred percent attendance at rehearsals which is a mighty thing really when you consider that that some people travel up to 40 miles to attend rehearsals it's a, it's a big thing. The most important thing that, that this group has done for the two valleys is to make people conscious of the talent that they've got in the valleys and of uh, the enjoyment that they can get from live theatre. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Ha <laughs> 